byakorwa umubdeka bwabyo omisho ganje ubwo orzaro rwa Israeli rukarekeraho kuba ihanga omisho ganje ebero byona okunukera reba obunaku nubwija obu orurembo rugaka kombekerwa mukama okurwa munarwa hana ne okushya ha irembo rya kekubo kandi no mugoye go kugeresa uryaye yongera omisho gugumze mu guhike aha cyubungo garebu gukube guze gowa norahanga rwona ortebwa mu emitumbi ijuri yakashenda ne msiriona kushika akagera kidron kushika kushika a ahirembo kushika akekubu kahirembo ryembarasi erukurebwa burugu buyizoba ryayerezwa mukama no rwo rurembo turuhwaho bundi no bukwakuba okushenywa ebiro byona eshweka chite cyatshomerwa aho nto cyagarcha Kisa shimwe e gice cha cyu munsi tujye gusomerwa kiri kuva mu gitabo cy'umuhanuzi Yeremia umutwe wa 31 akanyereka ugutandikana na 31 nuko uwiteka aravuga ati nzasezera miss izaza nzasezera na isezera norisha Ninzu ya 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 Yuda Ninzu ya Israeli ridakurikije isezerano na sezeranye na basekuruza umunsi nabafata gukuboko nkabavana mu gihugu ca Egypta iryo sezerano ryanje bararyishe nubwo narindi imana yabo nubwo narindi umugabo wabirongoreye Nuko uwiteka avuga iryo se nuko uwiteka avuga wa 33 ariko isezerano nzasezerana isezerano nzasezerana na ninzu ya Yuda ninzu ya Israeli ngiri ati nzashira amategeko ya yanje munda yabo kandi mu mitima yabo niho nzayandika ntibazongera kwigishanya bati menya uwiteka kuko bose bazamenya uhereye ku ukomeye kurusha bandi ukageza ku uworoheje ukageza ku uworoheje hanyuma yabandi bose uko niko uwiteka avuga utegeka utegeka uko niko uwiteka avuga wategetse izuba kori muri kira uzuba kori ba umuco wamanywa washizeho amategeko kugira ngo ukwezi ninyenyeri bimurikire ijoro utegeka inyanja kwihinduriza bigatera umuraba guhorera uwiteka nyiringabo niryo zina rye ati uwiteka nyiringabo niryo zina rye ati uwiteka nyiringabo niryo zina rye ati ijuru riri hejuru nibishobo nibishoboka ko rigerwa kandi imfaturo zo hasi yo munsi nibishoboka ko zirondorwa nubwo nzaca umuryango ubwoko bwa Israeli mbuho bwose mbuhoye icacabo icacabo cose nzabavana imbere yanje iteka ryose wa 38
hanyuma dore iyo minsi izaza hanyuma dore iminsi izaza nzubakwa nzubaka umurwa wanje ukandi uzaba uwiteka uzaba uwiteka uhereye ku munara wihananeri ukageza ku ruhetero rwirembo ryinchike kandi umugozi ugereshwa uzaramurwa ku musozi ku musozi wikidroni umusozi uzaramurwa ku musozi wi wi ku musozi wi garebu uzazenguruka ugere ku musozi wi ku musozi wi goya kandi igikombe cyose cintumbi gishirwamo intumbi gishirwamo intumbi kigasukwamo ivu kigasukwamo ivu kigasukwamo ivu kigasukwamo kigasukwamo ivu nimirima yose yerekeje nimirima yose yerekeje kumugezi kumugezi wiki drone kumugezi wiki drone aherekeje aherekeje kuruhetero rwirembo kuruhetero rwirembo ry'amafarashi haza no ry'amafarashi aherekeje iburasirazuba hazaba aherejwe uwiteka kandi ntazongerwa kurimburwa cyangwa gukurwa ukundi bavandi mwe ijojojambo imani shimwe i can hear you are sounding bavandi mwe twese turi bavandi mwe cyane sivyo we are the same and we want to thank god so much for the languages that has given us and at this moment i want to invite you that we clap hands in thanksgiving for these our brothers and sisters that were taking us through the readings and all of you as a group i want to invite you here in front i also want to invite the choir members all that participated the saint john's Catholic Community Choir, the Law Faculty Choir, the CU Choir, please come here in front. We want to do a prophetic action here. I'll ask the Chief Mishana to bless you because I can't say thank you and it's not enough. The ushers and, and, and organizers of this mission, please come over. Uh, mission coordinator, you follow the map. The head of late, you also follow the map. Uh, Reverend Justina would be among those. And this is how I'm saying thank you. I want to pray and ask you, Papa, to come and bless them. Please celebrate them. Celebrate them because they have been so good and they've done well. Virunjiririan, you've been behind this. Uh, you are one of the generators that is never celebrated. So please come. From here in the middle of the night, I would find warm water. So... Please come and we pray, they pray for us. And friends, let's give it up for them again in thanksgiving. Thank you for organizing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to pray with you, you who give yourselves to serve God in whichever way. I want to read a scripture for you to, 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 to know that God is, is, has your grip. I'm reading from Malachi chapter 3 Malachi chapter 3 beginning at verse 14 for you who serve God and give your life to serve God listen to these words you have said it is futile to serve God 
what do we gain by carrying out our requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord? But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly, evildoers prosper, and even when they put God to the test, they get what they need. The faithful remnants, those who feared the Lord and served him urgently and diligently, talked with each other, and the Lord listened to them. These are your words. A scroll of remembrance was written about each of them in his presence concerning those that feared him and honored him and served him diligently. And then in verse 17, on that day when I act, says the Lord, there will be my treasured possession. I will spare them just as the father has compassion and spares his own son who serves him. And you will, you will again see that distinction between those that are righteous and those that are wicked. Between those who serve me and those that do not serve me. So it is a blessing for you to give your life and your time to serve God. Lift up your hands and I pray for you. Jehovah Shikenu, you are the source of every blessing. And the scripture has told us that when that day comes, we shall have a distinction between those that Lord, we pray that that day, when that day comes, everyone standing here will receive a blessing. The Bible says, as said, that they are your possession. Lord, I pray that you tackle every part of their lives, in their families, in their courses, the units that they do. I pray that every course unit that appears so hard should become so easy for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray that every facet of life that seems to be ambiguous, they will see it and do it perfectly. But above all, when that day comes, you will remember them that have given themselves to serve you. I pray the blessing of God upon your life. Financial healthiness, financial breakthrough, total victory, and health, good health, long life upon you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let me hear the church of Christ say amen to that prayer. I love to thank you, Vice Chancellor, for all this that is being done here. It's you and the team of top management. Thank you so much, Vice Chancellor, and specifically for your, your rich heart for God. Thank you so much, Professor Gashom Atkunda. Thank you, our University Secretary, Madam Anna. Thank you so much for you are behind all this. Some of you, you are behind like a generator in a party. They might not see you, but you are the one who actually causes the real thing. We want to thank you so much. Thank you all of us and Jane and staff members for joining us. I can see my brother Arthur and others, they are here, brother David, who led us in, in group work and all that. We want to thank our brother and our dad, Abdon Ortega, he's with us, seated over there, and the family we want to thank you so much for the work well done. With us, we have AETTV. This service is being li live streamed. And we also have TV West Media House, the, the mega media house around. And, um, and of course, the biggest radio ever, Revival Radio, is here with us. We want to thank God so much for you, for the work well done as we do evangelism to the end of the earth. Friends, there is a preacher of the gospel that has joined us today, this morning. And then later we'll ask you to celebrate our preachers that have been preaching since we started this mission. 
Ameria Nkwatirire is here with us. Please, Ameria, you need to stand and wave to us. Ameria Nkwatirire is actually our product. VC, that's your daughter. And she's a preacher of the word, and she has joined us this morning. She's going to come here and hold a microphone and preach. And her preaching is through singing. To have Ameria on a function like this, you need over two million. N not now, Ameria. Not, not now, I want to call you much later and give you enough time. But she has chosen to come and do it and preach for free today. No, you don't understand that. That's why you are clapping those claps of LC1. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for remembering your university, your al alma mater. Friends, with us, we have our Bible expositor, Uncle Sam Oplot and the family. Please welcome them and thank them for work well done. Thank you so much, Papa. Thank you for teaching us the word of the Lord and how to approach it. I am personally, personally, I hear there is a song called personally. You have impacted my thank you, Uncle Sam. And our chief missioner is here with us, Reverend Demberia Yesu. We see, and Mama Anne, you missed last night, but we stood in your places and we chose to kneel down here all of us as BSU, it was actually the number was bigger than this. We chose to sit down here and kneel here and pray to God. And we cut a new covenant for BSU. Now, no longer shall we operate in the old covenant. And it was from our inner hearts, individual inner hearts, that BSU must begin on a different telling altogether. And that's a telling of God. Praise the Lord. I love also to invite the guild president to stand and wave to us and his cabinet. Please, you are welcome. We recognize your good work. And I hear you are now counting days to come back and be like us. And we thank you so much, guild president, with your cabinet. Do I have ministers here with us? Guild ministers, I always want to recognize you because you do great work. Could you be here? Your Excellency, our Minister of Ohona Bija. Yes, I can see some. So, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And now I want to invite to congratulate those who won elections yesterday. Congratulations, friends. Could you be here? Would you love to stand? Please stand. Good, good. Thank you so much. And I now love to introduce to you the guild aspirants. Wherever you are, please stand. And come in front, actually. <laughs> guild aspirants, come in front in case you are seated behind. And I am promoting you to be the president. Come, come in front, come. I, I want to give you the seat as early as possible. I know Papa Dembe, you once con you were a leader in UCU, and now this time BSU has broken record. We have 10. And when is voting, Your Excellency? On 10th. So we have 10 candidates, we're going to vote on 10th. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please welcome them. These are your guild aspirants. And out of them, please choose your leader according to your will and your sanity. And now I pr please promote you to the VIP tent. Please go and sit in the red seat so that you feel how hot it will be when you come. Praise the Lord. And may God bless you, beloved. May God give you comfort as you look around for votes. And may you all win and be our president. All win and be our president not presidents. Praise the Lord. I want to invite the choir to do for us the theme song. Amen. Praise choir, you are leading us in a theme song and immediately after that, 
Sister Amelia is going to come and preach to us. And as she puts the microphone like this, Uncle Sam will come and teach us the Bible. And I will not come back here right from Uncle Sam. Papa will come and conclude for us our chief missioner in a sermon and bless us and that will be the end of the day. Amen? Choir. Listen to these words and begin to think about it. Can I start it? Please give it up to them as they organize themselves. Let's 
Salvation and for this his love is precious and conditional. He remembers no more sins and no. a new covenant. So, Vice Chancellor, there is someone who is our neighbor, our closest neighbor. Mr. Wilson, could you be around? Mr. Wilson, he cut a new covenant yesterday. Wilson, ah, I saw him coming in. Nyumwazia Junurgui. I was happy. But he told me he's coming to give a testimony today. So I want to thank God so much for Wilson. He's a friend. When I was a student here in 2005, I was putting up in his rooms. He was my landlord. And now, when he gave his life to Christ, last night, I was happy. And thank you, Papa Dembe. Thank you so much. Sister Maria, would you love to come and you take us into praise? And, and after that, then Uncle Sam will come and teach us the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come as same way. Hallelujah. Bi braina bani shoma ya jirangu Israeli kuya sheri roburu huchiro. Mukama ya mo yeroka ariomunsi ya harim nonga. Ya jirati nka kunda na rukunde tawa ho. Nichongo mire ni kujere mbazi. Praise the Lord. Those who choose the Lord, He also chooses them. And he makes a new covenant with them. And that covenant lasts forever. Praise the Lord. Thank you for choosing the Lord this morning. And uh, I am privileged to stand before you to sing songs that I believe will bless your hearts this morning. Thank you so much, Reverend, for the introduction. I'm humbled. Kuna atanchile kwe shongora, abantu batan kakunye to mwe shongozi chonga. Kukandi umburzu wenjiri. Mwenu kuwa kujirangu mwe shongozi ija mpura na inda nguna kari yaba kuonjiri. Mwenu ntu ile njinobu sasi. It is over na shemele rwa kukuwa wa kuonjiri. Ndi umburzu wenjiri. Mkama simwe. Habwa kuwa kanjuna kurigenku mibiri nena. Kanda tuira na njeri ya mbabazi, obuna abire ni manya unyeza kutuwaru muenda gokubara. Ruhanga kampere za mukaga, tina ina zihire. 
Yo ni manyangu ezi nyi nenezi uguru nchondi kuija kugumira ni nzi gamba hu mpa kanfiri. Nki hayo mkago mkubara asini ya yakana. It's a miracle that I will never forget and I will always talk about it wherever I go. Abu kubara hanganka chumara gansan tukori chukora. I will give you my life. Na hati nchonye meriro misho ganyi. Ahabgachi mkaga umkubara. That's when I gave my life to Christ because he answered my prayer. Osi merhanga habwe mbabaze okori na hori ne mbabaze. Hallelujah. Har habo shomire nabo ababire nduenda kuzaa university nkiwe kukesha heji wambuze chila kura tehuncha kareta cash change it. So iwo kwele baha otajirango orumuro njumnonga aa Nemba bazar hang. Kama sim. Iwe bara emin shiru anga kuhire. Bara Amelia ogarju bare. Producer la ubenti. Nisha kugamba haru anga we kulunesi. Kama westi nisa. Ebi tule bire nebi tule bire ni wabi kora. Kama tule ni nyamusa. Ebi tule Muzika Inga wawo ine choine Na mwana wa magara Osi mbeu hanga Ishuka Ariyo binja wali kukenda Na mwana wa nivaru njikiwe Wonka ba mwe mario maruaro Nibataka Iweni wetu wa yeshanga Kando wati ali wachitu shashwide Murecha tu kwa tanse Tusi menye kuwa ho Kwa
Sive mukama mnonga. Aba mwetu waza kumanya point seza kuresira. Ugustunga. Zonkane njirachi. Agara hangane mbabazi. Kama simwe mnonga. <laughs> Karaga henku mibili kumna mnana. Kasho ma grade five yob shomesa. And I could use a baruku bichengo by a bit expired in ink. And as they could gaha mumpe and savish and went a gua. Kind of where I woke up a busy no ku no ku and Kajaran the transcript the Anja Kanja the Chever Yoko. When Hatin in your booze and Jenja Chile Ninga Yavi Rewati. Everything ya Chile. Hallelujah. Konkani nsi marhanga habu kubanyo weno kuijaha na zuzi kabemba bazi. Rhanga hewe chiti nsa. Hareche shongo rechi nukwe shongo na chijirangu na hanu mukama. Nyowe ahina akuri ire ama siko gakaga taru. Habu kubano mwe ndagu kujwara tukatu inaba nyavuzara baka ampara. Bakaba banza ba juara deru ba haga hatu ba bizorum charo ba turetera. Gwen ba chuturetera shanga nyanda kuru ba taba taka boku banka mbanjuleni kitonta kumano kuba juara kongeri jire kampara kuba jeneri inka second hand inka inka sixty something. Kuza kuza havu jeni o katiza sirupa sirupa. Imwe siripa ni mzuko esachi. Ni mzinaviramu. Ito tukwa tuzutiza. Kando jitizo wa muranwa. Chuluku maisa unu mkate jizirechi. Mkate ina jini. Ya berumu nubanu mjihani. Seri zoba ninyi ndajwaremu. Chakari ninyi ndajwaremu. E wabo jujwiro kambuga na nakujatu kongeje mirubatiri. Siripa ya njeka nebasa kugwa. Habo kubo wabo na wabo nda ine yako. A man young worker trying to win a bar, a masco gaho. It is over Kunaza Quijana Janta Tinjuareji Ninganjuareji. Hallelujah. Your waiting car could be hung her own dish of the review, nor hung. A shinan yanda could go and roam when Nancy. You see, my hunger everywhere I go and I find young people like you in the presence of God. When Vana we this is the best choice. Ogumo misho gar hang. E kanisa neri indaje. Kandi ne huera. Kandi ne kukuzaje. Praise the Lord. Nkakurandi omu from 2004. Nkajunwa na shoma na heza na heza. Na heza 2007 college. Nijomu rembo rwambara. Nkatungo mshija 2012. Ejone miaka nke tanu. Tukwe. Konka nkaturo murembo rwambara ndiyo muhicha shugeini. Aba shisha barhoni mbareba ni intambora nabo, ni nkora nabo. Ina hina arabire. Ndukuru gamini spoke shomesa. One day. Yom shomesa wa primary. Mwamu achima njire. Mkatuwa za gamburu jungu toku nchuza. Abo kubara hanga karu nye jesa. Amushara ba gwenshoni. Hallelujah. Kuna abire ni nita homu kajuka anje. Nkanyi neka nacho hea karunji. Kako mereje pafu. Rigizo wabari yo kumura. Basa gazo waboda kubandebele wajangu oboga wuija. Oboga wuga ajirachi. Mwondo mwuri nye ketera chifuba na ajirantu mukamba timbaru mwabu. Hallelujah. Ngoboga wuija. Ama kagaza kufa. Enskweru kubane wabareba. Aba nababi shabari yaha. Haruhu mkazoru kukureba kahura ya ajiru uruzi enjiru. Abu kubana amango buwota hiru mcharo eka ye ya ajirachi. Ya zomu recess. Neza kurugayo waga rika campus. Ruhanga tijere mbaba zimnonga. Aka njere mbaba zi for the five years. Until he got me the most handsome man in western Uganda. Chanche nda mwinja ne konferensi, mission ya newanza ya tamuka kapozi. Mwanza mtuwari ingomu wa mwanji, kakubanda mmanyi. Ize tuwari start traction. 
Kunkatna Mujana Nahan Mukama Chin the Kureka Nimba. Hallelujah, And I just make a wish, and the following day I see it pass. This God is good. For that matter, Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says what? I alone know the plans I have for you. Plans 
and not umuri nyankore na hendera ari kugira ngo mbone kubatamu amatsuko gebero babaho bwanyima haleluya ngukora rebe cicija ogiroto wanda bize hari ya naha nagira ki gumize mwo gumizo tinindanzi aya hindu kuzaninjira ki haleluya esho je tujende Amelia Ogarjinaze producer la Obenti Oh, 
Sister Amelia, for the anointing God has placed on you, and we pray that the Lord will bless you to bring his nations back to him in music. Let us humble ourselves and pray. Lord, we come before you this morning because you have called us to come. And Lord, as we come, we bring the whole body of Bishop Stewart University before you. We believe and trust that there is a lot of things you're doing in this university. And you want to remember this university, among all universities in Uganda, to stand as a model university, Lord. And Father, we prophesy that this university will take the name that it bears, Bishop Universities. And we are praying, Lord, the students who leave this place will see the nations for your word. We want to pray that students in this university will be sent as missionaries to the nations, oh God. Because there's a work you are doing in this university. We can see it, we can test it, and we have felt it. And Lord, for this ground where your word is being proclaimed, Jesus, may you anoint it this morning afresh, oh God. Thank you for the grace that you have had. Thank you for the chief missioner and all the speakers who have been speaking in this place tirelessly and we have felt the Holy Spirit worked in them. Receive the glory Jesus and receive the praise. We want to bring our brother Sam before you even as he comes to declare your word to your people. Lord we pray that he will decrease that your spirit will manifest in this place oh God. And Lord even as we come before you many are weak and weary. Some have lost hope Others are looking for a healing. Others are looking for a word. Others are thirsty. And they have not felt the love of Christ that we are seeing and is overflowing. Some cannot see that love. Jesus, this morning, may that love reach your people. May the restoration, may the theme that we have picked from Jeremiah 31, 31, that you are making a new covenant. Lord, may you make that covenant this morning with Bishop Stewart University. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Hallelujah. Please do clap for my wife. Um, God, by his grace, has allowed us to be together since 2006, the 9th of December. This woman is a wonderful woman. I praise the Lord for her. All you young men who are here and have not yet reached that place, Open your eyes, open them properly. 
Don't open your eyes carelessly. And you sisters who are here, and there is a million of them sending you texts, calling you all the time, inviting you for lunches and dinners and teas and coffees. As they invite you for teas and coffees, open your eyes, open them properly. Not just anyhow. I want to thank God for Alice. She's a woman of prayer, and together we have two children. Timothy is at school. Cheryl is right here with us. Please thank the Lord for her. Thank you very, very much. <clears throat> My name is Sam Opolot, some of you know, uh, especially if you've been here through the, through the, through the day, since Friday. Uh, we've had uh, a wonderful time together, and I praise the Lord. First of all, Chaplain, I really would like to apologize for coming late this morning. I am very, very sorry. Uh, it's, it's bad manners to come late. It's just bad manners. But I was hit by a terrible headache in the middle of the night. I can't explain it. I don't know what happened. But I felt so sick. This morning I could hardly open my eyes. I almost, I was tempted up to about 8.30. At the time you called me, I was lying down. I was tempted to say, Chaplain, please excuse me. Very, very tempted. I could hardly open my eyes. My head was pounding. We prayed and decided against saying, Chaplain, excuse me. We chose to come. And I'm praying that the Lord would give us grace to hear his voice this morning. VC, we really appreciate. Thank you for inviting us to be part of this mission. Reverend Emmy, Reverend Justina, thank you for the privilege. Nobody, people don't surrender their pulpits carelessly or anyhow. So when someone gives you his pulpit, hey, don't take it for granted. So, Sebo, we thank you. Thank you for the very warm hospitality we have enjoyed over these last few days. We feel very much at home. And in many ways, BSU, for those of you who have been here since we started, BSU in many ways feels like home for me. We've been coming here, not every year, but certainly we've come here from as far back, I think probably as far back as 2008 or 2009 or seven. I can't remember. But we've been here, and God, by his grace, has allowed us to keep coming. Jeremiah 31. I'd like to begin a reflection on that passage from verse 27 through to the end of our reading in verse, I think it was 34. No, it was verse 40. Before I take time to reflect on what we read in the verses that were ably articulated for us this morning, I'd like first to set the context. And I'd like to set the context in in, 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 in two aspects. First is the wider context of the nation of Israel. We know that when Solomon died, Solomon was David's son. David was a king of Israel. He was the second king. He took charge after, um, who was the first king? Saul. Took charge after King Saul. David died, his son Solomon took charge as king. Solomon died and his son Rehoboam took charge as king. 
Rehoboam acted in a way that caused some people to rebel against him. And Jeroboam took charge of a part of the kingdom and the kingdom got divided. So at the time we had Judah and Israel. At the time Jeremiah shows up in the scene, the kingdom has been divided over many years. Judah in the south, Israel in the north. Judah with the capital Jerusalem, Israel with the capital Samaria. Consistently were unfaithful. Consistently. Judah's kings sort of alternated between a one that was faithful to God and another that was unfaithful to God. The one thing which was true is that over time, their sin accumulated to the point that God was angry. And remember when God had released the nation of Israel from Egypt and had set them up in the wilderness and made this covenant with them that on one thing, live in obedience. If you do not live in obedience, the tribes I am making you to uproot, the Canaanite tribes that I am sending away and giving their land to you, I am sending them away as a punishment for their wickedness. But if you, O oh Israel, my people whom I love, you whom I have redeemed from Egypt, where you have dwelt as slaves for long, if you, O oh Israel, act like these tribes, the things you're doing to these tribes, I will do to you. The premise was, if you live in obedience to me, I guarantee you, I will protect you, I will bless you, I will provide for you, I will be your God. But if you choose, if you choose to follow the ways of these tribes, the way you have killed them, destroyed them, uprooted them and removed their lands. That's the same way I will raise other tribes to uproot you and kick you out of this place. That was the premise of the covenant. The premise of the covenant was I want to be your God and I alone want to be your God. What do we see? As soon as David gets off the throne. Yes, David had his mistakes. But as soon as David gets off the throne, the throne passes on to his son Solomon. Solomon marries wives. Many. Solomon, are you here? Hey, don't be like that, Solomon. One wife is enough. Sufficient unto you, O oh man, are the troubles that come from one wife. And of course, the greater. The blessings are far better. But Solomon picked many wives and concubines. And the Bible is clear his heart was drawn away from God. And the pattern was set for rebellion against God. And that continued. But God in his mercy and his love consistently sent prophets to warn the nation. Sent prophets to the kings and the priests and the prophets. I mean to the kings, the priests and Yes, to the kings and the prophets and the priests to tell them, people, get back to the covenant. Sometimes they listened, but most of the time they didn't. Friends, that is the wider context. 
And so God, in his sovereignty, raises on Israel and Judah. So as we read this, let's remember that that's the wider context. The wider context is the nation has consistently lived in rebellion against God. And God has raised Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon to execute judgment. And friends, let me, let me, let me say this. God is a God of grace. God is a God of love. God loves his people. But I tell you the truth. God is pure. He is holy. He is perfect in his ways. He is perfect in his love. He does not condone sin or rebellion. Let that be a warning to us. As we knelt here yesterday, and hopefully as we will kneel today to recommit ourselves to this God, let's remember that we are committing ourselves to a God who does not condone rebellion. So by the time Jeremiah shows up as one of the prophets that God has appointed, that's been the pattern, the pattern of rebellion. By the time he shows up, Babylon has arisen, Assyria has arisen, Egypt have arisen. At some point, the nation, both Israel and Judah, were like an extension of the empires of both Egypt and Assyria. But at this particular time, Babylon has arisen, they have attacked Judah, they have taken the king. They have captured people from the palace. They have taken young men. You, you remember Daniel and colleagues? They were young men. They had been captured. Babylon has ransacked the temple and plundered it and taken precious things that were for the service and the ministry of God in the temple. The people have gone to exile and they are in pain. There is a remnant. There are people who are still here in Judah and Jerusalem. But they are also in pain. Because those in exile and those here are being subjected to very ruthless rule. No wonder they sing in Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon. Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon. We sat down and we wept. We wept when we remembered Zion. When we remembered Jerusalem. When we remembered our home. We sat down. We wept. We were in exile. And our captors tormented us. They told us sing for us a song. And they said, how can we sing a new song in a foreign land? How can we sing a new song at a time of trouble and pain? How can we sing a new song when we are oppressed? We are not at home. We cannot sing a new song. Go ahead. Where we sat down and there we were when we remembered Zion. Yet the wicked carried us away in captivity, requiring from us a song. 
How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Hallelujah. Amen. No wonder they said, Oh, how could we forget Jerusalem? How? They said, May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. For I do not remember you. I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did. Verse 7 of Psalm 137. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down, they cried. They remembered how they were attacked and uprooted and how Jerusalem was destroyed. They remember the cries of the captors. Tear it down. Break it. Destroy it. They remembered how their children were dashed. They picked children. Do you know children? Verse 8. Daughter Babylon. Doomed to destruction. Happy is the one who, who repays you. That's their prayer. They are praying that, oh Babylon, may you experience the things we experienced. This is what you did to our children. You picked our infants seized them, dashed them against rocks as these guys came to execute the judgment of the Lord against Israel. This is what they did. They went for children, picked little kids and bashed them on rocks as their parents were watching. Can you imagine the pain of watching your child being dashed? Friends, Their own king was killed. This is the immediate context. In the midst of this anguish, in the midst of this captivity, in the midst of experiencing the ruthlessness of, 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 um, of Babylon, if you are among them, it would look like it's all doom and gloom. It's like there is no salvation. That's what it feels like. And yet, in the midst of their pain, some false prophets show up. Hananiah in chapter 28 of Jeremiah. This is what Hananiah promises. Hananiah shows up and says, Guys, okay, I know that you are in pain, but I tell you the truth. In two years' time, in two years' time, this thing will be over. The challenge with false prophets is that they make promises that seem very exciting and uh, they make promises that do not challenge you to responsibility. We see that a lot, even in our time today. And Anaya shows up and he says, only two years. In fact, what's going to happen? This is what God is going to do. He picks the yoke, wooden yoke, and breaks it. And says, do you see this yoke? It's broken. This is how God is going to break the yoke that is called Babylon. Break it. If you had that and you are in pain, you're almost tempted to believe, isn't it? Because your desire is to be saved. Your desire is to be released. Your desire is to be freed from these wild men. The temptation is to listen. And many did. Jeremiah says, friends, don't listen. Instead, let me tell you something. This captivity has only just begun. It has only just begun. In fact, it's going to extend for at least 70 years. Hananiah is telling you two years, brace yourselves. It is longer. And then he says, in fact, you see Hananiah, he has broken a wooden yoke, isn't it? Listen, this is what God is going to do. He's going to get one of metal. If you thought wood was simple, just imagine a metallic yoke on your neck. That's what you're going to experience. And at that point, I want you to imagine where these people are. If Hananiah had brought some hope, Jeremiah has just dashed it. I need to go quickly. Eat. 
it is in that context of one we have experienced ruthlessness we feel like our lives have come to an end it is in that context where they have been assured that this ruthlessness and this pain will not last a short time. It is in that context that beginning from chapter 30 of, Jer of Jeremiah that we begin to see Jeremiah paint the picture, a picture of salvation, a picture of redemption from this pain. It is in that context that Jeremiah makes that promise of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 in the letter that he writes to the exiles. It is in that context in saying that, yes, I know it is going to be long. I know it is painful. I know it is difficult. But let me tell you one thing. I, the Lord, know the things I have planned for you. It is in the context of pain that those words of hope show up. I'm sure there are people here who feel like the Jews. The things you have wrestled with for years on end. They have been passed on from generation to generation. You look back at your dad's same experiences, your mother and father, your grandparents' same experiences. I tell you the truth, the Lord knows the plans he has made for you. He does. It is in that context that the words of Jeremiah 39, 31, 31 show up. It is in the context of pain and struggle that those words show up. It is in that context that he says, Behold, the day comes and I will make a new covenant with my people. Hallelujah. It is in the context of people crying out, needing salvation, needing redemption. It is in that context. And so let's walk through those verses very, very quickly. God being my help. Verses 27 to 30 outline for us one thing. Let me read verse 27 to 30. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I'll plant the kingdoms of Israel and Judah with the offspring of people and of animals. Just as I watched over them to uproot and tear them, to overthrow, destroy, and bring disaster, so I'll watch over them to build, to plant, declares the Lord. In those days, people will no longer say the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be on edge. Listen, he reminds them that, you know what? I oversaw the process of uprooting you from your land. I did it. I oversaw that process. And he says, the same way I oversaw the process of Assyria and Babylon and, and, and Egypt attacking you and, and punishing you is the same way I'm going to oversee the process of replanting Israel back to their place. Replanting plants and animals, restoring you to the nation that, we, that you are. But he says one other thing, that... No longer will it be said that the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children, are, their teeth are on edge. Instead, this is what will be said. The individual eats sour grapes and his individual teeth will be on edge. In other words, I will no longer blanket sin. I will no longer blanket sin. I will no longer blanket rebellion. I will hold each individual accountable. It will no longer be indiscriminate punishment because you belong to this nation. It will be you, the individual, and your God. Woe to you who think that the salvation of your father, because he's a pastor, is your salvation. 
what to you who thinks that because you belong to a church that is alive and vibrant that then your salvation what to you who goes in groups you're part of the worship team have no relationship with Jesus what to you the salvation of the worship team is not your salvation your salvation is between you and God make the decision yourself what to you who thinks that you serve in a Christian institution whether that be church what to you who thinks that because you hold some responsibility in a Christian institution, then you're saved. Woe unto you, for no longer shall it be said that the parents ate sour grapes and the children's teeth are on edge. Instead, individuals, when you eat sour grapes, it is your teeth that will be on edge. As we reflect on these things, I would like to challenge you to take a step this morning. Take a step this morning as an individual and make that commitment to come to Jesus as a person. Before you get banded and branded, take the step as an individual to love Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 31 to 32. This is what he says. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will be like the covenant I made with their ancestors. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. Listen, here is a people crying out for redemption, and here are the words of, Je of, 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 of Jeremiah. He says, the Lord says, a time is coming. A time is coming. A time is coming when I will make a new covenant. Friends, it is not immediate. It is coming. But I want you to imagine the hope that those words carry. It is coming. And he says it is unlike the old. Do you know what? Two things. Number one is that is actually a promise to the nation of Israel for restoration from captivity back to their land. But I tell you, can I suggest to you that it's also a pointer to something bigger that God is planning? Because he says the covenant will no longer be like the old covenant. The old covenant was based on rituals, sacrifices, and traditions. It was if you sinned, you brought the ram. Isn't it? If you sinned, or if you wanted fellowship, you brought some crops. It was all dependent on my effort, my struggle, my attempt. John chapter 4, and if you can project that for us, okay, looks like the projector is gone. John chapter 4 from verse 20 to 21, we see Jesus with this woman at the well. Do you remember that story? John chapter 4. We see Jesus at the well with this woman, the Samaritan woman. Jesus finds her about midday in the afternoon she's looking for water in verse 21 and those are profound things verse 20 I'm going to read for us in verse 20 a few things get proclaimed ah, this wind is terrible somebody help me you're there read for us somebody 
verse 20 to 21. John 4, 20 to 21. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither worship on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Nor in Jerusalem. Continue. Verse 22. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Mm -hmm. But the how is coming. And has now. And has now come. For the true worshippers. When the true worshippers mm -hmm. will worship the Father in spirit and, and truth. In truth. Hallelujah. For the Father is seeking such a worship in him. Amen. Listen. The old covenant was based on rituals and traditions, on practices, on sacrifices. But when Jesus meets this Samaritan woman, she still has the mindset of the old. The mindset of the old is this. We Jews... You Jews, you have your place of worship. It is in Jerusalem. For us Samaritans, ah, it is on this mountain. And Jesus challenges her to look beyond the mountain and to look beyond the place of Jerusalem. He challenges her to look to something bigger that God is doing. And he says to her, True worshippers are those who will worship him neither in Jerusalem nor in this mountain, but those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus expresses the idea of the worship of God beyond places, beyond labels, beyond tags. The following and the love and the fellowship of Jesus goes beyond labels, goes beyond names and tags. One of the struggles today that makes our witness extremely difficult is that we have em emphasized our labels more than the one who brings us together. And so because our labels are bigger than Jesus, it is hard for us to come together as a body of believers to proclaim witness and to serve him. We are quick to judge the other because they do not belong to us. We are quick to throw away the other because they do not belong to us. We are quick to proclaim that the other one is not saved simply because he does not belong to our congregation or our denomination. Here's what Jesus says. Those who worship, the true worshipers, are those who worship me in spirit and in truth. It is unlike the old covenant. In fact, it is unlike the old covenant because Jesus himself is the sacrifice for the new covenant. The Lord himself accomplishes this by his own means. And we see that in verses 33 to 34. This is what we are told. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. After that time declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to another, know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness 
and I will remember their sins no more. The Lord himself will do a spiritual work in the hearts of his people. The Lord himself will draw to himself his people. The Lord himself will forgive their sins. We see in Romans chapter 3 verses 21 to 26 when it declares for let me read it for us. Romans chapter 3. Again, Reverend, if you don't mind. Chapter 3 from verse 21 to 26. Verse 21. But now the righteous of God, apart from the law, is revealed, mm. being witnessed by the law of the prophets. Even the righteous of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. Mm. For there is no difference, for all have I've sinned, sinned and have sh fallen short of God's glory. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. whom God set forth as a, pro as a propitiation a by his blood mm -hmm. through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God has passed, passed over the sin and were previously committed. Mm -hmm. Verse 26. To demonstrate that the present time is righteous, that he might be just and the, the, justifier. the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 3 from verse 26 to 21, Paul picks up on this theme. Paul picks up on this theme and he says, but now a righteousness has been revealed remember in the old covenant and this is what the samaritan woman seems to cling to your justification is based on one where you worship two how you worship in terms of rituals and traditions and sacrifices it's all dependent on you but now we are told the righteousness of God has been made manifest apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. In other words, the law and the prophets point to this fact that there comes a time when true righteousness will show up. And it will show up in some way. It will show up in the man Jesus Christ. It will show up in the man Jesus Christ. It will be a righteousness that we receive by faith. It will be a righteousness that is by grace. It's an act of God. The free gift of God. It is a righteousness that is the work of God himself. And this is demonstrated as Jesus dies on the cross. So that all our sins, and he uses a very fancy word there, the propitiation. In other words, that your sins and my sins are placed on the man Jesus. That on the cross he nails all our sins, all our failure, all our all our difficulties, all our struggle is nailed on the cross and so he can stand on the cross and say it is finished because truly everything that condemned me, the power of sin that ruled me is dealt with once and for all at the cross. And all I need now is to look to the cross, to look to the man Jesus for my freedom, to look to the man Jesus for my freedom, to look to the man Jesus for my salvation, to look to the man Jesus for the things that have, that have defeated me over the years. I have tried with my strength. I have used my money. I have visited everywhere. I have gone to prophets. I have run from church to church. I have been from which doctor to which doctor looking for a solution. I have done everything I can. It all fails 
I need to look to the man on the cross. His name is Jesus. He guarantees my victory over sin. He guarantees my salvation, my eternal salvation. Woe unto you who thinks that you have what it takes to deal with your problem. Woe unto you who thinks that your money is the solution. Woe unto you who thinks that your political power is the solution. Woe unto you who is craving to climb the ladder, thinking that finally when I get up there, it will be done. Woe unto you, our true salvation. Our true redemption is dependent on one thing. The man Jesus, he was on the cross and he declared, it is finished. The beautiful thing is this. It's a free gift. Strangely enough, yesterday I gave the illustration of a baby. You know, many of you are not here. But I gave this example. You know how, how many of you have taken care of babies? Little ones, you give them milk to help them to feed, eh? Hey, the rest of you have never, isn't it? You don't know how to feed babies. I'm not talking about your own children. I'm talking about your sisters, your brothers, your younger ones, when they were babies. You know how sometimes a baby gets hungry and you can recognize that the child is hungry? And you get a bottle of milk and you want to give it to the baby, but the moment you bring it to their lips, they, you know, you bring it to them and then they turn away like this. Have you experienced that? Then you bring it to this side and then it turns away like this, like it's not interested. Huh? Then you bring it this side, it turns away like this. You try to force it, it starts crying. Like it rejects the free gift of milk. That is how many of us are. God has said to you, I guarantee you your salvation. I guarantee you your victory. I guarantee you the healing of that disease. I guarantee you myself. And how often we listen to those things and we turn away like that hungry little baby. I challenge you this morning. Receive the free gifts. I challenge you this morning. Do not play around with this free gift. I challenge you this morning. Embrace this free gift. Finally, friends. Verse 35 to 40 of Jeremiah 31. It says, Thus says the Lord, Who gives the sun who gives the sun for light by day and the fixed order of the moon and the stars for the light by night who stirs up the sea so that its, its waves roar the Lord of hosts is his name if this fixed order departs from before me declares the Lord then shall the offspring of Israel cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says the Lord, if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below can be explored, then I will cast off all the offspring of Israel for all that they have done, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the city shall be rebuilt for the Lord, rebuilt for the Lord, from the tower of, of Hanail to the corner gate. And the measuring, and the measuring shall go out further straight to the hill.
the whole valley of the dead. Friends, the one thing I would like to say is this. God draws us to the certainty of this promise. And he bets it on his own sovereignty and might and power. He guarantees that this promise I am making, this promise I am making, I guarantee it myself. And he shows us an example and he says, look at the heavens. Do they fall apart? Do, they, do those heavens crush? They don't. Who sustains them? It is me. He says, look at the majesty of my greatness. Look at the beauty of my faithfulness. Look at my ability to do things. That is the guarantee I give. That the promise I make to Israel, and I would like to suggest the promise he makes to us, is guaranteed by the faithfulness, the might, and the sovereignty of God himself. To deal with God is the real deal. Other people run to other things. They choose to deal with other things and they neglect the real deal, the deal with God himself. Brothers and sisters, I would like to end. But I would like to end by saying to you, indeed, we have wrestled and struggled with many things. Some of them are things we find extremely difficult. We don't even have the courage to share with others because we ourselves know the pain. We've struggled with sin. We know it. But there is a salvation. There is a redemption that is guaranteed by the one and only. The creator of heaven and earth. The one who himself chose the means by which to save us. I challenge you to deal with God. Because to deal with God is the real deal. Let's pray. I'd like to invite my brother Peter. To come and pray for us. And as the Lord allows. To carry on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise King Jesus. It is prudent that we pray together. I'll ask you to stand up on your feet and think about those words. Give a thought to those words. When the music fades, all is well. And I simply come I simply come Longing just to breathe Something that's a word That will bless your heart Sing it again When the music fades Tell it When the music fades all is swept away and I simply come. Think about your life, longing just to bring something that is worthy, something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song is with song. He 
Search much deeper, you search much deeper with me. You're looking into my eyes. Oh Lord, I'm coming back. the signs. All about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Where it's all about you, Abba. Where it's all about you. Sing it again. All about you. Hey. It's all about you. I need you more. It's all about you. Well, it's all about you. hands in the air and begin to pray for yourself. Ask the Lord in his splendor to touch your life in a special way because it is God that worketh in each one of us in this little time that we have together. In these little minutes that we have together. Just make a prayer that Lord take over my life.
up those hands and just worship.
You deserve the glory, Abba Father. You deserve the glory, King of glory. I want to ask you to pray that the Lord will give you grace to partake of this new covenant that you'll not be taken away by things that do not glorify you. He is able to do exceedingly. We give you glory, Jehovah Shaft. We give you glory, Jehovah Rapha. We give you glory, Jehovah Shikem. Oh, Sizi Wemukama, oh, Sizi Wega. Yes! to Jesus come on clap your hands to Jesus you have 30 minutes of clapping give glory to God with your hands give glory to God with your hands thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 let me ask you to sit briefly and then I will invite you after a few minutes for a moment of prayer and conclusion of this mission week. God is gracious to each one of us this morning. And just stand to your neighbor and tell them you will be blessed because you can. You know that song? We'll be blessed because we came. Hey, tell your neighbor, you'll be blessed because you came. Tell him, tell her, tell them, tell them, uh, you'll be blessed because you came. for yourself because you can as we come to a conclusion of this mission week I know God is touching many lives hallelujah just to pick it from what my elder brother has uh, brought to our attention God desires to make covenant with you and he desires that you walk in that covenant as an individual. Praise the Lord. Heaven is not for crowds. Heaven is for individuals. Scripture says, whosoever believeth will not perish but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. I want to just briefly take you to a dream that I had last night. I dreamt last night. And I woke up at around 4, I think I wrote even the time here. I woke up at around, at around 3, yes. I woke up at around 3.47. When I woke up, I immediately looked at the time and it was 3.47. So I began writing because I had gone through a series of things, but I saw this in the dream. 
where I slept. I saw myself in a place that was so beautiful in that dream. But while there, I saw a big number of people. All of them were coming in a line. I'm not telling a movie. This is a dream I dreamt last night. And everyone was walking towards some numbers, some letters. There was a chain of letters. But before every, every person, there were different letters and many in number. And every one of us that had gone to that place, we had our own turns to count the numbers, to read the numbers. They are letters. Some letters were not usual letters. Some letters were far different. Some letters were not common. Each one in their turn was interested in reading their letters. But also their way of reading was interesting. Because some people would not read their letters. And whoever failed, a hole came under their feet. And they would fall under that pit and disappear. This dream was in the night. So I was looking so closely, waiting for my turn. Because some people were just laughing. As people read their letters and could not read their letters, others would burst out and laugh. <laughs> he has failed. She is failing. And then before they knew it, the first person who was swallowed by that pit made everyone keep quiet. My turn came. And I read so loudly. And the noise around me were the words like, Yay! Hallelujah! Keep the worship of the king praiseworthy. Now, this is when I realized that I was standing on firm ground. As I read my letters, there are those letters, even me, that I came to that I could not read. But I would simply say, this one is heavenly. This one is... But there was some kind of of pressure and tension as I was reading my letters. Some letters were golden and in some shape that I couldn't understand. But some had wings and others didn't have. But whenever I touched them, I would say, this one is also heavenly. So whenever I reached them, I would pronounce and say, heavenly. I pronounced and pronounced, but the letters were so many. And somewhere, there was a chair. There was some guy seated with a long beard, white in color, and he was saying nothing. And when, when, when I reached some letters that I couldn't read, I looked at him, and he would just giggle and say, I also don't know. But he kept smiling at me and telling me, continue, go again, read again. That is when I woke up. I woke up at around... That time, it was 3.47. So I immediately got onto my phone and I began writing whatever I saw. And I prayed to God. And God gave me the interpretation of the dream. The letters mean the time we have on earth. The pronouncing by yourself means that everyone will account for everything they are doing on earth. The number of letters mean the number of the many that profess Christianity. Failure to, to read your letters means that there are things during your time that you cannot account for. My turn means every turn will come. Everyone's turn will come. And it will be so clear from among the many that it is your turn to come and read your letters. Every turn will sound so loud that everyone will know that it is your turn. Even the people that you think do not know about you, they will surely look at you and listen to you reading your letters. The wall that, I don't know whether it was a wall or a hole, but somehow the ground will just open up and someone goes down. That meant the pit of hell. 
The guy who sat on the chair means the Lord himself. He will be around to advocate for us. Encouraging us but not defending anyone who fails to read their letters. I went back to bed at 4.15. I switched on the light of the bathroom because I was scared. I said, I can't stay in this darkness again. And then this morning when I woke up, I prayed. And I said, Lord, give me grace as we conclude this mission week. May none of us who have entered the new covenant fall into that pit. So I went into the shower when I woke up, prepared myself, packed my bags, because I knew I wasn't going to go back to that room. But those one, that one hour, two hours, that is when I enjoyed my sleep. But the time I went to bed, I was into some kind of fear around me. Friends, as we come to a conclusion of this mission week, with whom have you made a covenant? I thank God for the people that were here last night. And we bravely, seriously dived into this new covenant. I don't know about you who was busy searching for votes and hunting for people to really recognize your presence. I'm not condemning you. I pray for you. Because I know God also wants to use you in that area. I have, I have done this, the university politics on many grounds. I know what it takes. So I don't blame you. But how I pray that you take this morning so serious also if you have missed all throughout. This morning I have written a few things that I want us to elucidate and I will shut up. And my sermon this morning is called Living in the New Covenant. What are some of the things that we ought to do to live as the newly covenanted people? At this moment I want to ask you to bow your heads and we pray. And I will say these things in a few minutes and I will shut up. And as I say them, I will be speaking part of my life and the testimony so that we can walk, so that we know how to apply these things. Bow your head and ask the Lord to speak to you, specifically you, personally you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Make it personal. I am your house. I am your house. Your home. Your home. I welcome you. I will come you. Lord, Lord I, I will come you. I am your house. I am your house. Your home. Your home. I will. It's your voice that we long to hear. It's your voice that we long, that we long to hear. I am your house. I am your.
we come before you and we open our hearts. Will you teach us to live in this new covenant that we may glorify you in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come and clap your hands to Jesus. Clap your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How do we live in this new covenant? How do we live in this new covenant? Praise the Lord. Number one. Be a slave to the truth and righteousness. I'm just going to be practical and very fast. If you are to live in this new covenant, be a slave to the truth and righteousness. Romans chapter 6 beginning at verse 15. Be a slave to the truth and righteousness. Romans chapter what? Chapter 6 and verse 15. Let me read it very fast. Chapter 6 and verse 15. 15. This is what it reads. What then are we to sin because we are no longer under the law but under the grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Either of sin which leads to death or of obedience which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves to sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching which you were committed and having been set free from sin have become slaves to righteousness. Praise the Lord. Remember we say that is in, in this new covenant, it is by grace that we are called from wherever we are and the Lord makes us the people that he created us to be. Now, if by grace we have been brought into this new covenant, yes, now we must desire to be slaves to the truth and what? And righteousness. He who is a slave to sin will be, a must, will, will be taken by sin all throughout. That is in John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And beginning at verse what? John chapter 8. Beginning at verse 34. What does the scripture say? Jesus answered them. Truly, truly, I said to you. Everyone who practices sin. Is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The sun remains forever. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Listen to me, children of God. If we are to walk into this new covenant, we must be slaves to what is right. To, we must be slaves to what is true. We must be slaves to righteousness. As we put on the blessed bread of righteousness, we must walk as people set apart for the glory of God. We must walk as people that know that we know that we have an identity in the man, Jesus Christ. If Satan has found a grip on you, you are a slave to what he does. As I speak right now, some people are slaves to the things that glorify the devil. But one way we can walk into this covenant is to be slaves to the truth. And slaves in its sense, a slave does not do what they want. They do what their master want. A slave does not make decisions their way. It is their master that makes their decisions. In other words, Jesus must be seated on the throne of your life. Jesus must be the Lord of your life. I know of many people who know Jesus. They profess Jesus, but he is not the Lord of their lives. They are slaves to things that are not true. They are slaves to things that are sinful. I want to say to you, number one thing, if we are to walk in that covenant, we must be slaves to the truth. We are in a generation where people are getting freedoms and rights above the truth. Some people are saying, you have your right to marry a feral man. You have a right to marry a feral woman. They are simply telling you, lesbianism is what is true according to the law. 
and they're saying, I have a right to do what I want to do. I want to say to you this morning, which is getting into the afternoon, the day you will desire to walk in the truth, the devil will lose his grip on you. The day you will desire to embrace the truth, the Bible says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If you are to find joy in this life, in this new covenant, you must desire the truth. That even if something is, is so exciting for other people, you will check it out. Is it the truth? Hallelujah. Is it the truth? I was telling some people the other day that the truth is a man cannot get pregnant. Even when these people of LGBT try to bring it so loud, you people, we have a right, we have this right. The truth is a woman cannot produce sperms. That is the truth. Even if you go around it, let me say this, even if you don't believe the truth, it will always remain the truth. You don't have to believe the truth for it to be true. <laughs> Even if you don't believe the truth, it will remain the truth. If they tell you don't step into the lake if you don't know how to swim, do you have to believe it for it to be true? <laughs> Even if you don't believe it, step in there. You will see what will happen. If they tell you don't touch in a live wire, electricity will shock you. Do you have to ask many questions? How? How will it happen? Uh -uh. Even if you don't believe it, it will remain the what? The truth. So this lesbianism, this transgender thing, this, is, this queer thing, these people are so funny. There is also Q which is queer. In other words, you can wake up and get married to your dog. Hello? People have done so. I have seen Madonna walking in church with, his, with, with her horse and she says there is no man that can satisfy me this horse really does it well so pastor you marry me with you wait me with this horse of mine but i want you to know children of god as the lies are rising as the lies are growing up every day we are in a generation where lies are making their way through that people are missing out on the reality of the truth. And Satan is telling them, hey, go and use contraceptives. Your life will be fine. I was in Kenya the other month and I actually realized that some condoms come when they are already HIV affected. To some of you, we say, ah, Njabidia, Basaga. Some, some of these contraceptives that come these days, they come when they are already. How did I get to know it? I was seated at a swimming pool. I was taking my evening tea at one of the five-star hotels in Kenya. And this lady comes and sits near me. <laughs> and I was talking. We are talking about, we're talking about Uganda. Okay, that is where I got to know that Kenya has what they call Kenyan tea. And Uganda, we call it African tea. We, <laughs> we still have a problem, isn't it? Those people are so patriotic. You give them milk, they call it this is Kenyan tea. I was telling the chaplain, we should come up with the Ankole tea, because milk comes from here. You should call milk Ankole tea. I mean, feel good with what, what, what comes from. But you say African tea as if it is from Canada, from Nigeria. Hello? As we were talking with this lady, some ladies begin to come around the swimming pool. It is in the evening. And they are dressed so weird. They are dressed badly. And I got concerned. Then I asked her, Madam, what is this that is happening? And she told me, those, those do massage. But to tell you the truth, they are prostitutes. They come in the name of what? Massage. So if someone wants massage, they tap her, they go to the room, and they do what? They do massage. We keep it at that. Don't think beyond it. But in actual sense, they would do something more than massage. So I asked her, so is it why you are here too? And she said, yes. <laughs> yes, I also do massage. But of course, if you like me, we go in the private and I take care of you properly. I said, what? 
You see how Satan has made some things look so good and yet they are totally bogus. So this lady, we go ahead and discuss and we talk, so how do you do it? How do you do such a thing? He said, no, every one of us here is really equipped. And then I ask, okay, how equipped are you? And then she brought out condoms. You see, these people are not ashamed. They are not shy. So we went deeper. And this is when she told me that actually some of us here are on mission. The condoms that we have are HIV effective. <laughs> I got so shocked. We are on mission and we are paid more money than the massage you people are talking about. So I am sure if I go, she, he puts it on, we have the fun. I'm very sure. For him, he thinks he's not affected. But for me, I know. I think she told me these things because she knew I'm not, I'm not going to stay in Kenya for so long. I was a visitor. And I began preaching the gospel to her and she was laughing. She was like, you, I don't know how to begin the repentance. <laughs> Pastor, I don't know how to begin the repentance because I've affected as many as possible. Because every evening, I come on this swimming pool and people take me. Actually, I, I, when I was writing on their forms in that hotel, I told them, I don't know, but I realize you are promoting prostitution and yet you invite very dignitaries in, in this hotel. And they followed me up to Uganda to, not to talk about their hotel. So I will not mention the hotel, but I, want, I just wanted you to know that actually these things that you think are safe. <laughs> Some of them are already affected. If you are to walk in this new covenant, you must be a slave to what? To the truth. The truth is that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That is the truth. The truth is that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You don't have to prove to anyone that you have thighs. Let me tell you, before you even walk here, we know you have the thighs. We know. You don't have, you don't have to show us your, your thighs. Hello? If you are to walk in this new covenant, be a slave to the truth and righteousness. In other words, you don't want to do it in your flesh, but because you are a child of God, you say, I will not do what people want me to do. Hallelujah. Paul writes and says, I go to where I don't want to go. But because I know the spirit leadeth me, I want to know him and the power behind his death and resurrection. There is a way Paul is trying to show us, though in his flesh, he would love to be in Philadelphia. But because the Lord works in him, he ends up in Corinth because it is not about him. No wonder he says, it is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. That, that is the new covenant. It is not you on the throne of your life. It is Jesus seated on the throne of your life. And the devil desires that the many people are destined to destruction. That is what the devil desires. He knows you will come here and lift up hands and sweat every part of your body. But he knows very well that you're going to go back and masturbate. He knows very well that you're going to go back and sleep with a man, not your husband. He knows very well that you are cheating in class. He knows very well that you are struggling with smoking. And you know the truth that this smoking is taking you away. But you don't want to believe it. You simply listen to what the devil says. Enjoy. Enjoy. Hello. Hello. Praise the Lord. Praise King Jesus. I struggled in my life to get back to my feet. I was so swallowed by drunkenness. When I sang in the bars, people would buy for me. People would buy for me alcohol. Man, I would get scriptures and I interpret them for my own. When he was in Kana, he turned the water into wine. And those days there was a song. Mogoro teli yomwenge. I would say to myself, by the way, that person is right. I would drink. 
But I forgot that at the wedding in Cana, the Bible does not say that he turned water into waraji. The Bible does not say that he turned water into beer. And many people who are taken by drunkenness, they don't want to face this truth. In fact, the Bible says that they drank and got satisfied. Bible says that they drank and got satisfied. Bible says that they drank and got satisfied. Hallelujah. Be a slave. The thing that helped me overcome drunkenness is I began to look at things in their true sense. But did God really turn water into beer? I noticed that was not the truth. He turned water into wine. Hallelujah. And even wine has types. And the Bible says they drank and got sex. Banywa ni wakuta. He may have taken some good juice that day, isn't it? So many of us are taken away from these realities. We can't walk into this new covenant if we play around with the truth, if we compromise the truth, if we look at the truth in any other way. Number one, if we are to walk in this covenant. We must be slaves to the truth. The truth is sex outside marriage is sin. That is the truth. Even if you try to massage it, soothe it, hug it, peck it, you, you try to comfort yourself, it is sin. And you know what? Even if COVID made things to go high, the wages of sin is still death. God does not start anywhere to change the, the, <laughs> the price for sin. It is still death. And that is the truth. That is the truth. The day you will desire to choose to be a slave to truth, you will see the goodness of God in your life. I am an example. The moment I chose and began to face reality, I made conclusions because I was sexually abused. I made conclusions that all women are fools. That was, no, that was wrong. That was so wrong. I thought every woman is an idiot. I thought every woman is a sexist. That was so wrong. Like some of you have made conclusions because of what you have gone through in life. And the devil, is, the devil is, has convinced you some way. So you live your life out of the reality Comforting yourself with a lie. Today I am a married man and it is because I faced reality. Today I am married to a, ma a woman from this land, the western land. The people that sexually abused me were westerners. But I had made conclusions in my, 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 all westerners are bad. Friends, that was so bad. My wife is the best woman on earth. From the West. She's called Musimenta Caroline. I even put my hand in the pocket when I'm talking about her. Just to feel the warmth of the name Musimenta. Hallelujah. 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 I faced the reality. I faced the truth. I came to the point of saying, okay, what is the truth? You are seated here. You are under a lie from your childhood. They have walked you under the lie and you can't come out. If you are to walk in this new covenant, face the reality. I struggled giving my life to Jesus Christ because I thought as a Roman Catholic, we are born again. Until I faced the reality. I wrote 20 questions. And I took them to a bishop. The Bible says the biggest office is the bishop. Is the bishop. Where did the Pope come from? And my bishop could not answer that. I had to face the truth. If you are to walk in this new covenant. <laughs> stop massaging yourself with what has been said. Look out for the truth and walk in that truth. I grew up praying through these saints. Go to Sabide. 
but the day I read first Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 that there is only one God and one mediator between God and men the man Jesus Christ I faced that truth and I said now I'm no longer going to look for this woman that they call the mother of God can, can, can she give birth to God I mean God lived before time that is the truth <laughs> that is the truth God lived before time he is the creator of all things and then you come and say to me he was given birth to by Mary. Are you okay? If you don't want to face the truth, it is your problem. For me, I faced the truth and I was redeemed. Number two. Number two. Number one was if we are to walk in this, we must be slaves to the truth and righteousness. Number two have a personal relationship with Christ. Full stop. Have a personal relationship with who? With Christ. If you are to walk in this new covenant. Because Christ is the anchor of this new covenant. He is the beginning and the end of this new covenant. Without Christ, this new covenant is null and void ab initio. The lawyers, you can understand that. Without the new covenant, without a relationship with Jesus, this new covenant is nothing. And I want you to understand because there is a big lie that is moving around. There is a big difference between Pentecostalism and being born again. Many Pentecostal churches have represented themselves as born again churches. But if you look at the things they do, there is nothing like being born again. Anyone, wherever you are, you can actually be born again. Jesus did not go to the cross that we become Anglicans. He went to the cross that we may be what? Born again. But this business of causing people to believe that it is only those ones that are born again in churches. I am born again. Let me say this to you with a lot of confidence. I am born again. I came to the Lord in the year 1999 after living a filthy life. After living a dirty life. But you go to a place, everyone is saying, it is those born again churches. They are Pentecostal churches, not born again churches. That is the truth. Now, if you are to live in this new covenant, hallelujah, have a personal relationship with Jesus. Have a personal relationship with Jesus. He says, Whosoever believeth is given a right to be called a child of God. Number three, if we are to live in this new covenant, we must overcome desperation. And this is very pertinent for you young men and women that are seated under this, that, this, 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 this voice. Overcome desperation. To be desperate is to desire things faster, faster. To desire things quicker, quicker. You lose things of value and you take away things that have no value. In this new covenant, we must overcome desperation. Do not be desperate to have money. Satan will take you somewhere and kill you and destroy you. Do not be desperate to have a phone. Do not be desperate to, to do certain things. In your right time, God will bless you. Satan is taking the advantage of your desperacy. You want clothes. You want shoes. You want iPhones. You want these things. So you can easily lose the things of value for things that are valueless. If you are to walk in this new covenant, Overcome desperation. Oh, I remember the club for the Holy Spirit. Club for the Holy Spirit. I remember the story of a man called Esau and Jacob. Let me tell you the power of desperation. And some of you, because you're desperate, you even don't remember where you are now. You get shocked of yourself. Hey, how did I get here? Desperation. If you are to live in this new covenant, you must overcome desperation. This is what happened and this is what the Lord has brought to me. 
on the account of beans. Tell your neighbor, beans. Esau lost his birthright. This is what the Bible says. That Isaac loved his son Esau so much that he had chosen him to be his what? Hair. Now one evening, Esau came back from hunting. <laughs> and that day he had caught nothing. He found when Jacob had prepared some nice soup, beans. In fact, I love you to say to your neighbor every time you say beans. And Esau asked Jacob, would you give me some of your soup? And Jacob put a question before him. Would you also give me your birthright? And listen to this desperacy. This guy said, what does this birthright have to do with me? You, you give me the soup and take the birthright. Aya. Aya. He just didn't know that he was losing something so precious. Like some of you. And up to today, <laughs> when we are praying, we do not say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. No. <laughs> what do we say? We say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and who? Turn to your neighbor and say, because of beans. I don't know why you are desperate to get that man. I don't know why you are desperate to get that woman. I don't know why you are yearning and losing your identity. Some of you are losing your virginity. Some of you are losing your dignity. Because you think you quickly need this thing. If you are to live in this new covenant, you must overcome desperation. You just don't know how. You just don't know how. Esau fought. Banange, Esau did whatever it took him to take back his birthright. He even offered a thousand camels, a thousand horses, donkeys, cows and Jacob didn't want. You are here because of a chapati you went to someone's bed. Because of wanting to plate, to plate your hair, you took a sugar daddy. <laughs> hey, come on overcome desperation in this new covenant be calm and be patient because your God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask for you will buy these cars when that time come. You will build those houses when that time come. You will get married. If you're near a woman, tell them, you will get married. Do not be desperate. You will marry someone's daughter. If you're near a man, tell them, you will marry someone's daughter. You don't need to do those things. You will graduate. The time for graduation is coming. If you are to live in this new covenant, do not be desperate. The Bible says that be anxious for, un for nothing, but in anything, make your what? Your request known to who? To God. For in, in his new season, he will make all things perfect. Listen to me. God will make your marriage perfect. You don't need to go out and lose your body anyhow. You don't need to lose your virginity. One of you is seated around here. You are regretting the day you got onto that border border. And some of you are in a relationship right now, but you regret the day you, you said yes to that girl. Because she's the source of your pain. She is the source of your misery. She is the source of your troubles. I got into a relationship with a girl called Rashida Narushiba. I, I really loved this girl. Tell your neighbor, the reverend loved the girl. I did whatever it took to make sure that Rashida is fine. I acted like a father even before she accepted that she will get married to me. And some of you have that problem. You're just still in courtship, but you act like you are the wife. Let me go and wash for him. Are you okay? You are simply desperate. I, I need to cook for him some lunch. 
Are you the mother? No wonder when they, they go, you will be so heartbroken. Don't be desperate. Don't. I prepared a very, very big birthday party for Rashida. Very big. I put it in, in one of on one of, of, of the best petrol stations on Entebbe Road. You know, Entebbe Road is one of the I, I got the word from Reverend yesterday, the bourgeoisie. <laughs> The bourgeoisie areas. I mean, I put in three million just to make sure Rashida is fine. And I bought a good phone. Actually, they were resembling. My phone and hers were resembling. I said, I'm, I'm, that will be her gift. So I, I, I prepared. I gave her the phone and there was noise in the tents uh, in, in, that, in that hotel, that restaurant at the petrol station. We were having fun and then I received a call from my, my, my boss in Makerere University where I was working to go and just deliver something. I was working as a research assistant there. Hmm. So I told her, let me drive very fast. I'm going to come back. I said, it's okay. So I drove to Makerere, I delivered the files, sent some emails as she had ordered me, and then I came back, I found Rashida on a bumper of a car having sex with another guy. That is the power of desperation. You think you need things very what? Very fast. In this new covenant, we must overcome desperation. You will work out your nails when the time comes. Let no woman confuse you. You will plate that hair when that time comes. Let me rush. Number three. Is it number three? Number four. Number four, if we are to walk into in this new covenant, we must save for our future selves. Save for your future self. Live your life like you know you're going to be a mother ahead of you. <laughs> Don't try to be a mother now. Like some of you. Live your life knowing that you're going to be a businesswoman. You're going to be a lawyer, a teacher, an engineer, a nurse. I mean, save for your future self. Jesus Christ gave himself as a ransom that we can live up to today. Up to today. But some of you do not want your children to be like you because of the way you live your what? Your life. There is a future mother in you. Some little children are going to run and say, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. But you will know in your heart, ah, I am an idiot. Though they are doing what? So they are making noise. They just don't know I am man. What? If you are to live in this new covenant, save for your future. Save. And the ultimate future that every one of us has is we must go to heaven. We must see the Lord. We must see the Lord. That, oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want. To be among the number when the saints go marching. The question is, are you saving for that future? Are you living your life for that future? Because that time is coming. When the Lord, I saw in my dream, I don't know, I saw in my dream when people were in a line, we were so many. And there were some numbers on the string. And everyone was supposed to read those numbers. And some people were failing to read their numbers. They would look around and that bearded man was simply doing like this. And earth would open and someone is swallowed. Man, that thing was so scaring. It is the thing that caused my, my fear. Somehow, it looked red because it would open and close. And the person is taken. I saw that dream last night. The night that has brought us here. Are you saving for your future self? Before you think about your future being a lawyer. Before you think about, some of you will end up as in police. That is the world. As we talk now. 
you are busy in two class of, of breaking Karil versus Kabolic smoke ball. You are, you are busy breaking. But maybe God has ordained you <laughs> to be the what? A major general somewhere. Hello? So that is the world. But when I talk about saving for your future self, are you ready to see the Lord? Are you ready to read your, now, your letters? I use the letters because I saw that dream this morning. Are you ready to read your letters? Or oh, some of these letters will be hard for you to read because of the way you live your life. Save for your future self. Save for your tomorrow. Some of you are going to be fathers. Fathers! And your children are going to be shouting, Daddy, Daddy. But you will say, oh, Ah, <laughs> If you want your children to celebrate you, begin now. Hallelujah. Amen. Begin now. I give the best care to my children because I know where I came from. None of them has known my story. I have not gotten the courage to tell my children where I came from. But their mommy knows. And I'm sure she has told them some of these things because of the things I do. Your dad is like that because <laughs> somehow she tells them. You get what I'm saying? But I am looking for a time when we sit and I tell them. Are you saving for your future self? Or you're going to regret? You're living a life of I don't care. <laughs> You'll end up in a city called I wish I knew. As you're living that life of I don't care. Ah, Sagara Kumanya. How do we say that in Urinyankor? You will end up in a city called I wish I knew. God has given you such opportunities. You come and sit under such men that speak to you. It will be so bad. I meet some of my students I met a student of mine as a conductor. And I wanted to use that taxi. He surely to make sure he sees that I have seen that he is now a conductor. He was called Mokasamo Yombia Mutiaba. He didn't have a Christian name because in their family there were witch doctors. But I always told him, Mokasa, come to the Lord. Mokasa, come. God has better, bigger plans for you and you say, ah, for us we have our judges. After some good time, I, I find him in Bweyogerere and he's crying. Bweyogerere chile kabanda, Bweyogerere chile kabanda. He said, what? Is this Mukasa? <laughs> so I went and I just said, he refused. He said to me, you won't sit. I told him whether you want or not. Um, you're taking me. And we had a scuffle there. And of course, people fought for me. People were like, They didn't know our history. <laughs> and it is the driver that sorted all things. The driver came out and said, Vayo! And I sat with Mukasa throughout. He wasn't talking. He didn't call anyone until... <laughs> He didn't call anyone and yet he was so noisy before I came. Why do you wait for such a time to meet Reverend Imi in Mbarara and you're hiding? Ah, Reverend I, ah, Reverend I. Why? Save for your future self. And the ultimate future is heaven. It will be so bad for you to lift up hands here and we see you lifting up hands. Whoa, 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 whoa. But you actually destined to destruction. Number next, I want to come to a conclusion because we need to pray. If you are to live in this new, new covenant, delay gratification. Delay gratification. Not everything that comes your way is yours. Not everything that looks nice is yours. 
1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. Are we there? Let me read it very fast. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 23. Chapter 10 and verse 23. This is what it says. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build me up. Not all things are beneficial to you. Delay gratification. You will get that phone. You will get the money that you need. You will eat the food. When I was still a kid on the streets of Kampala, I really wanted to eat chicken. And I say to myself, when I grow up, I will buy a full cock and do justice to it. But do you know that <laughs> I have grown up I have someone who can actually my wife is the best cook in the world. But do you know that I have never bought a cook? The thing that I gratified I always desired I always said if I get money I will buy a cook and eat it. Sarah but <laughs> I have even bought birds in my house and they give me two pieces and I say, you people, for what? I need one. But when I was a kid, I thought I would cane the entire cock myself. Delay gratification. You want to gratify your body with sex. Delay it. And I told you about sex the other day. You're bringing demons into your lives. Now you have a protection on sexually transmitted diseases. But you don't have a, prote a protection on sexually transmitted demons. You're falling in love with someone who is born with a spirit of poverty. With, with someone who is struggling with some family disease, chronic disease. Someone who is struggling with, with bitterness, rage, anger, unforgiveness. They are struggling with something. You go with them to bed. You will come out with that spirit. Satan doesn't want you to, to, you to know that. He makes you think that sex is about the body. No! Man is created in body, soul, and what? Spirit. And the day you have sex with that person, those things connect. If there is any evil spirit on that man's life, you come out of that quickie with that spirit. And that is why some of you are finding life so hard. You are, you are a very wise individual. You would go to class and do things rightly. But now they, is, they give you the easiest number, but you can't even do it. The day you had sex with the Akatwishuka. <laughs> things it turned out to be so bad for you. You took the sexually transmitted demon. And let me tell you, I always tell singles, one of the reasons that people are struggling to get married it is because of the demons they have. You took the spirit of rejection the day you slept with him. So you desire to get married and everyone is rejecting you. And then your parents are telling you, mana wange funa gowe siva ko. Funa. Chukulava mkwaya kutabu kao zina mazino kutufira kovu fizi. Hello? One of the reasons that has kept many people away from marriage, they have a lot of sexually transmitted demons. Hallelujah. Delay gratification. You will enjoy these things. You will have the phone that you want. Number next, if we are to walk in this new covenant, we must connect with the right people. With the right people. As a clubist and as, as a barman, I had a lot of friends that were wrong. That were wrong. <clears throat> One of the things I did so much was playing football. But all the friends that I had around me were taking me to destruction. 
if you are to walk in this new covenant, there are people that you should cut yourself away from. In fact, if I ask you to close your eyes now and you think about your friends, you would actually realize that out of the ten, only three are relevant. The other seven are making you lose it. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 1 that blessed is a man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, nor stand in the stand of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He meditates upon it day and night. And it goes, it shall be like a tree planted by the riverside, which will bring forth its fruit in its due season. And then in verse 6, he says, the wicked are not like that. They are like chaff that is blown out a well by wind. Some of you, your friends are like chaff. Today the guy is sober. The next day is thinking very weird things. But you could still call them your friends. I had those people. They would tap on me anytime, man. to There was a time I was beaten. <laughs> You see, the Bible says, you reap what you do at. I was so good at stealing people's shoes on the doors, in the dormitory, on the beach. But one time they stole my shoes. But because I knew where the shoes are taken, <laughs> I walked and went to Kampala downtown. And I, whenever I bought a shoe, I would mark it between the soles. I would put something. I would either put a dash plus plus or I put CCD or I put wrapper. So someone stole my orange boots. The Bible says you reap what you do at what you sow. So I went I went down to 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 to, to, to Kampala, Mochiko, Mowino. And behold I got my shoe. And I told the guy, I insisted and I was beaten. You see, in, 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 in Owino, they will always begin a fight to protect what they have. Before I knew it, I had <laughs> that day was not a good day for me. Hello? Delay what? And have the best friends. Don't walk in the counsel of the wicked. Belong to the fellowships. Belong to the choir. Belong to people that will build your life. If you realize that so and so are only telling you, let's go clubbing, let's go to the bar, let's go and drink. If you really want to walk in this new covenant, stop walking with them. Look for people that have a relationship with God. In fact, let me say this. If any man says they love you and they don't have a relationship with the author of love, they are not loving you. Who is the author of love? God. God is the one that made this thing called love. But if any woman is telling you that they love you but they don't have time for God, run as fast as you can. Because whatever is pulling them is either lust or they have seen your cabina and they are like, I must touch that cabina. If that guy has no time for God, they do not love you. Let me say it again. If that guy has no time for God, surely, be sure, conk sure that they don't love you. God is the author of love. The Bible says God is love. I don't know how many women I, I vibed, but I was surely not looking for love. I wish they knew that I had no relationship with God. And when I met Carol, my wife, this time I was so intentional. And my meeting with her was really divine. Very divine. I just knew it was God working in me. Because I had made a prayer. Lord, now I open my heart. I want someone for marriage. And one day I got my phone to call a brother of mine and I missed out on three digits and you know who I called Carol it is not funny it is something that I still talk about because it was a divine connection 
Hello? Wrong number turning out to be a wife to someone. There were two digits, not three. Instead of 48, I wrote 28. It was one digit. It was one digit. And she was so mad at me. Don't you know that you're calling? Why do you just call? And I stayed calm. Kumbe, the calmness was from heaven. I stayed calm. She abused and shouted and made noise. And only I said, I am so sorry. I was calling another. Ah! Why do you just call people? Now you're wasting my time. But still, it is my air time. Hallelujah. But with the time, because I stayed calm, she got interested. Why would I abuse this person to this extent? And still, today, she's the wife of mine. I would have said much on that story, but it is interesting. I usually say it when I'm meeting married and singles. Hallelujah. Lastly, lastly, if we are to walk in this new covenant, we must fear God. This generation is struggling with this one thing, the fear of God. The Bible says in, in what? In Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13, that what? To fear God is to hate evil. Many people, as we talk right now, they really want God but they continually do evil. They continually commit things that are against the will of God. If we are to walk in this, in this new covenant, we must fear God. The Bible says to honor God is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, the evil ways of false words. The reason as to why you still dress the way you dress is because you don't fear God. I'm talking about you who is showing us your thighs. If you really fear God, you would dress for God. You would look in your mirror and you say, now if God came as I am seated there, I would not miss. The reason as to why you still con every woman that passes you, you young men, is because you don't fear God. You think every woman is your girlfriend. The reason as to why you still steal, you still do things that are weird, is because you do not fear God. To fear God is to hate evil. Let me ask you to stand up on your feet. Let me ask you to stand up on your feet. Take a moment and think about this new covenant and how you live your life. Let me ask you to close your eyes and to avoid destruction from people that are walking, walking around and those that dressed in a way that can pull your eye. Just close your eyes. Think about your life and how you live it. And think about what Jesus can do in your life if you made a covenant with him. We read a scripture yesterday night in Psalm chapter 50 and it said I'll, I'll say gather my faithful people to me you who made a covenant with me. And I want to say if you know you have no relationship with Jesus I want to ask you to come and we pray together. We can begin this covenant don't mind the way you look. He says, come the way you are. Just the way you are. God wants to make a difference in your life. I walked in church with dreads. I was on my way to a club. 
And I just heard people singing and I went there with all my chains and my trousers and my, my dreads. But people received me just the way you are. Jesus wants to do it, to make a covenant with you. Touch my body, touch my soul, touch my spirit, oh, and let me free. Touch my body, Lord, touch my body, touch my soul. Touch my body now. Touch my, my body. body. I need you. Touch my soul. My spirit. Touch my spirit. Set me I free. Set me free. Touch my body, Lord. Touch if you're there and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, touch my I want you to come soul. and we pray together. Touch my Say, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hallelujah, I imagine all of us that are here have given our lives to Jesus. Can we clap our hands to Jesus for that? Thank you, Lord. But if you're here, you actually accepted Jesus as your Lord, but somehow Satan has kept you in a life of desperation, you are living a life not worthy of that which you accepted. And you want to recommit your life to Jesus and affirm this covenant that you got yourself into. This conversion, this mission week is for you. You have a relationship with Jesus, but Satan has made it so distant because of the sin that has entangled you, because of the gratification that is eating you up, because of the desperation that is eating you up, because of the wrong things that you have desired to indulge yourself in. You want to recommit your life to Jesus. I'll give you an opportunity. Just come out of that congregation and we will reaffirm our faith. It is not about your neighbor. It is about you to say, Lord, I mean this. Sing a part. Yeah.
as parents in this university, here is the harvest. Let's nurture these children. Amen. And for friends, Christians, let's go ahead and we nurture them. I want to invite you to Reverend Justin. Please come and pray a blessing upon these children of the Lord. And they go and resume their seats. In your church. And thank you for this that you have brought from the world and have committed them to your grace. Thank you, Father, and for us who believed you long time, Lord, that we are meeting with them and we are nurturing them. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you bless us as we walk with them in this journey of salvation. As they learn from us, as you lead us, oh Lord, in this journey of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The beloved of the Lord, may God bless you. May God watch over you. May God give you peace. And the blessing and health of the Lord Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, may that blessing take care of you. May that blessing keep you in this journey of salvation. May that blessing keep you standing. And may that blessing be upon all those who believed him. And may that blessing keep you in fellowship and never depart from you now and forevermore. Amen, and someone shout amen to the Lord. Amen. amen. Brothers, as you can resume your seats. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. Chains are holding me. I want to invite the choir. We are going to sing together a, a hymn as we offer to the Lord. But before we do that, I want you to celebrate Jesus so much for his word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing and reviving PSC. And we also need to thank God for the speakers. Madame Pena, who is already now in Kampara, and Papa Oprot, and Papa and other speakers that we had please let's give it up to them and we will say a prayer for them we celebrate them and let's give thanks to the Lord thank you, thank you friends thank you for offering yourselves to the Lord and now at this moment choir you will lead us and we shall sing together hymn 129 this is Chiga, and then we offer to the Lord in front of every tent, we shall have a basket and we will do it chop chop and give thanks a lot. Offertory and thanksgiving combined.
for you, God, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the message. We thank you for the gift of money that your children have given up to you, Lord. We thank you for everything, Lord, that we have seen here, that we have had here, that we have done here. We thank you, glory for your holy, we glorify your holy name. We invite you, Lord, to continue being with us, moving with us, and keeping us in the right order and in the right way, Lord. We thank you, we glorify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let's continue in prayer, and I would like to invite my brother, the Reverend Denberia, to come and, and give us a blessing. Let me ask you to get on your feet and we pray a blessing. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May you walk in the light of the truth of the word and not compromise these truths. May this new covenant bring you to a place of redemption, joy, and peace that surpasses all human understanding. May you see the goodness of God in this land of the living. May you not live under condemnation of your past, but live to the glory of him who called you from wherever you are. I pray the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding to guard your heart and your mind and keep you in connection with God Almighty and his dear son, Jesus Christ. I pray the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May that blessing remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. I want to make one announcement that those who accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior, this mission, and those who renewed their faith, we have not written your names down, we have not taken your contacts, but we believe Christ is in you you'll be reminded to come for a fellowship, to belong to a care group. We have care groups here and we have a fellowship, a general fellowship on Thursday at 5 p.m. And on, on Wednesday, every Wednesday we have uh, a midweek service here. We request you that you, you, there's no way you will grow when you are not attending such fellowships. Please make sure you attend those fellowships, attend a care group, register yourself in a care group. Do we have care group leaders here? Can you stand up or, or put up your hands if you are standing up already? Stand up, please. Care group leaders. Please, those take care of your souls. They nurture you spiritually. And the Reverend, the, our chaplains and I come there to monitor, to see, to add on. Okay? So please belong to a care group. Come for a fellowship. Or even when you go to your home church, where are you fellowship from? You have not been attending a fellowship. Please go and attend to a fellowship in your church. Okay? Because when you, when you sit down and keep quiet, the devil will come back to you and will take you back to where you have come from. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Reverend Charles. It is a reminder that please every Thursday we have a fellowship for born again. Come and join us. At this moment, I want you to give us like one more or two, three to five minutes to listen from our dad, the vice chancellor. She's going to, he's going to come here and cross this mission uh, with his words as he feels. Please, vice chancellor, we recognize you. Come and say something to your children. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. Amen. I want to start by congratulating all of us for coming to the end of this uh, mini mission. Let us congratulate ourselves with a big cloud. Let us congratulate ourselves. With, please let us clap our hands and thank God. Praise God for coming to the end of this uh, mini uh, mission. I want to, on the first note, uh, thank the missioners and uh, the chief missioner, Reverend Simon Dembediaisu, and the entire team for 
the word of courage for touching our hearts, for being our teachers, for being our counselors through the entire main uh, mission uh, period. Please let us give them a big thunderous clap. It has been beneficial to the entire uh, here, the entire community of Bishop uh, Stewart University, to the students, to the staff, to the guild uh, uh, team, and the alumni, we have really benefited a lot, uh, uh, basing on the, on the theme and the five uh, topics that you really took us through. We are very grateful once again. Uh, I want to uh, recognize the presence of the top managers who have really uh, managed to be uh, in this uh, mini mission at the end of it. Top managers, please stand up for recognition. And that is the university secretary, then the senior managers, senior managers, senior management team. Around, please stand for recognition. We have the deans and uh, heads of departments around. If you are around, please stand up for recognition. Thank you so much. The guild leadership and the team, your team, guild president is around. Please stand for recognition because you really did much. And uh, during your term of office, uh, we have now, you are crowning your term of office with this main uh, uh, mission. Uh, congratulations. And uh, I know the sky will, is no longer the limit. So even after your term, please, you know, uh, you continue serving the Lord and uh, uh, you really be guided to greater heights. Um, we have been uh, taken through uh, many uh, areas and uh, now we have joined the new covenant and now let us live in the, in the new covenant and live the old covenant. I know uh, this has been uh, this mini mission has really created some break has, uh, from the books now to listening to the word of God to, that have touched your souls, that have touched your hearts. And I know after uh, in the coming, this coming week, we shall now be ready to live in the new covenant, to live together, to relate well, to attend our lectures, to respect each other, to respect our elders, to uh, live, live responsibly and relate well and resiliate. Keep on moving. Keep on moving under the guidance of God. Basing on what we have been taught, really let us uh, work together. Let us aim at working at the team so that we really move Bishop Stewart University to greater heights. And the chaplain and the chaplain said the entire team, we want to thank you so much for organizing uh, this mini mission and to see We still need more and we really know that the team you have seen, Bishop Stewart University community, yearns for such uh, mini missions and even the greater mission that you organize. So we really urge you and request you to organize more of such missions so that and bring to us uh, uh, such great people of God to share with us, to share with the Bishop Stuart University community, the entire staff, the entire uh, students, the entire good leadership, the entire alumni, so that really they change our hearts, they change our lives and uh, for, the, for, for all of us and the entire uh, community. I want to really want to say that, uh, congratulate and uh, uh, say that this mini mission has come to an end, but it ha it, the impact has created should remain with us, should remain in us, so that we really change for the better. We change for the better and for the greater heights of this university. Thank you so much for listening to me. I beg you to end there and wish you uh, a good time after this main mission. Thank you so much.
Yes, we clap hands as if we are clapping for our own fathers. Thank you so much, VC. Thank you for encouragement. It has been all about you and your team. Madam Ann, staff members of Bishops at University, lecturers and all other dons in this university, it is all about you. We are here to serve you, and I thank God so much for this community, and we praise the name of the Lord. Our God reigns. Now listen to these friends. Mama Mary, I do want to stand again. Amelia comes to us as an alumnus, and she's a prophet preacher, and also at the same time a studio preacher and in, in recording and singing. And therefore she has, how do you call yours? Ours is a convention, yours is a what? It's a worship concert. So we shall have a worship concert at Ajip Motel, uh, on the 16th of July. 16th of July. And if you want tickets, come to me. Hey, at least I will know where to direct you. And tickets will be coming uh, soon. And she will be doing this at Ajip Motel. And for children, they will pay only 5K. For adults, will pay 10K. For VIPs, we'll pay 50k as a VC to a So VC don't prepare 50. Um, family table 200, I think that's where I fall. Family table 200, so uh, Madame Anne Silva, 500k, and then VC gold, uh, 1 million. So like I have categorized you, please begin thinking about our own daughter. And BSU has produced many musicians and want to support them. One of them is Promise K. Promise, do you want to stand? He has the best music that is not celebrated. Just because he's, he did accounting and he forgot about marketing. Praise the Lord. We are done with this mission. And I want to thank you, Rev. Charles. I want to thank you, our... Uh, Reverend Justina, and we pray that God will continue using every one of us. Oh, okay. Uh, some of you have never had a, a photo with VC. We will ask you to grab a chance. But for staff members, immediately right from here, we're going to stand here and we have a group photo with our chief missioner. We are done. We are saying, fight a good fight. Why do you want to stand with us and we sing it together? as we recess to go and serve the Lord. Fight a good fight. That's right.